I'm Alex Cerini. And I'm Presley Davis. And no, we are not Canadian. Now, Presley, we have a guest. We do. And who is it? It is not Other Presley. No, it is not Other Presley. Other guest, introduce yourself. Uh, hey, everybody. It's me, A-Rod007. Also known as Alex. <laughs> yes, I, I am Other Alex, but for for the purposes of this podcast, I guess I'll just go by A-Rod for you guys. Yes. <laughs> so it's, it's less confusing for us and for you. Yes. Um, Less confusion all around. Yeah. Exactly. So, uh, hey, Rudd, Alex, what is your favorite superhero? Batman. Gotta go, gotta go with the obvious choice. Batman. Yeah, anyone who, uh, subscribes to his YouTube channel, which is, uh, Storyline Films. All one I, word. All link. one word. Yeah. We will link it in the description, so, uh, yeah, anyone who knows, like, who, uh, subscribed to them will know that, and, uh, Yeah. What other nerdy things are you into? DC TV shows, anything like that? Uh, yeah, right now the only comic book themed TV shows I keep up with are Gotham and Arrow. I know all the Flash fans out there are probably pissed, but I don't know. It's just I'm not, not pissed. It's just not. It's just not my thing. Uh, pretty much the only nerdy thing I do is my YouTube channel. Uh, me and some guys we do video game playthroughs and then we do movie commentaries. Uh, that's probably our biggest thing. And uh, I'm throwing in a little plug here. Uh, soon. The time is to be determined, but we are planning on doing commentaries for both The Amazing Spider-Man 2 and X-Men Days of Future Past. So if you wow. subscribe to my channel, we will be doing those at some point in the near future. So be looking out That's for awesome. that. Yeah. So, for today's um, topic thingy, what we're doing is we, uh, A-Rod came up with the idea of us listing off our favorite superhero movies. Live so, action, of course. Yeah, I had an animated list, but then, well, a list that included animated films, but then Presley was like, no, then I have to add other ones. So we're just kind of not bothered. We, uh, well, we will go over our favorite animated list later. But uh, for now, Eventually. it will be, <laughs> but for now, it will be live action only. And we will start with A Rod. Okay, uh, number five, I'm going to go with Captain America the Winter Soldier. Uh, this is this is easily my favorite Marvel Studios movie, mostly because the stuff that happens in it actually has ramifications over the whole universe, like with Shield and Hydra and everything, which was my problem with like Iron Man three and Thor. Like a lot of that stuff didn't really feel like it would transfer over into the other movies, but like with Captain America: Winter Soldier, it it's huge. Like what happens in that movie is very important. So that's kind of what I want all the solo Marvel films to do, like push the universe forward and not just be villain of the week. We'll see you guys for the next Avengers movie. And that's that's why I like Winter Soldier so much. Yeah, very good choice. I thought I was thinking the same thing. Um, Winter Soldier, although, is not on my list. Yeah. Uh, going into that movie, I was just like, oh, it's just going to be. A, I thought it was going to be that one off. Hey, yeah. come see the next Avengers. Come see Age of Ultron. Um, but no, it was actually, yeah, really good. And that was actually, like, my biggest problem with, like, Thor The Dark World. It really is, mm -hmm. hey, bad guy of the week who wants to blow up the world, but when, then we beat him and nothing happens. And then in Iron Man 3, we see them try to connect the first <laughs> Avengers to it, but then yeah, it's yeah. just at random intervals, Tony has a panic attack, and then we never see that really, like, resolved. It never has any ramifications. It never – nothing ever comes of it. And in the end, it was just extra time to a very long movie, and we're all left disappointed. With a plot twist that was – that split audiences, <laughs> really. Oh, man. I actually like Iron Man 3 a lot. I I know I'm in – I'm probably in the minority of comic book fanboys that enjoys <laughs> Iron Man 3, but I – had, I had fun with it. That was about yeah. it. I mean, I didn't, I didn't love Better it. Better than Iron Man 2. <laughs> that's not saying much. Yeah, no, not really. But, I don't know, I enjoy all the Iron Man movies, so. But, regardless, uh, who's up next? That would be me. Coming in at number five is one that people might not think of superhero movies, but I consider it to be, and that is V for Vendetta. Um, we've recently had a Guy Fox Day, um, November the 5th. And, uh, yeah, we have just a great character, now kind of the face of Anonymous, and um, just a really good representation of a big brother 
government in the future and a kind of terrorist that is seen as the anti-hero and some great acting from Natalie Portman and others that comes together to be a really well-made movie and a great anti-hero superhero. Yeah, good choice. It was a very – it's a very interesting choice, but a good choice. Yeah, I mean, it is um, DC Comics and Vertigo Comics, and uh, a lot of people might not consider him a superhero. More of just a, I don't. Yeah. But uh, I'm just going to go ahead and say that I don't really consider him much of a superhero. He um, did overthrow a technically evil government, which we kind of have the same thing happening in Future's End. Do we? I mean, they have like Brother Eye. <laughs> yeah, but we don't have him over. No, we don't have like government. We don't have a V, but we have the big. Terry brother. McGinnis is not overthrowing the <laughs> government. <laughs> well, see, here's oh, but... here's the interesting thing about V for Vendetta. The movie makes him more out of, out as a as a superhero than than the comic book does. It does. Um, I haven't actually read V for Vendetta, but I, I've heard enough about it. I've I've looked up stuff about the comic book versus the movie, and. See that, that that's why I don't quite love the film because it's a bit Hollywoodized. It is, yeah. The comic does t- make him out to be just like more of a villain, <laughs> kind yeah, of. That, that's kind of like it's more like, of a Guy Fox. It's like who are we siding with? The terrorist who wants to destroy everything in the name of himself, or this evil government? Right. I, I think that makes it, it a little more deep and intricate and complex than the instead movie just, makes it out to be. Instead of just, I am nobody, I am all of you. Yeah. <laughs> At the end of the movie. Yes. It, it, it adds more of a real life aspect to it with it, with um, you being unsure of which is the right choice, yeah. I guess, um, than the movie was where it's just like, I am the hero. True. Look at my hair. I mean, it's a good movie. It's a good movie, but I think it kind it of is, misses, yeah. I think it kind of misses the point of the book. Very sure. All right, Alex, your number five. My number five is going to have to be 2012's The Avengers. Okay. Now, now this is this is the movie that reignited my interest in the comic books in general, which is makes it very interesting that um, I end up liking DC more than I like Marvel, <laughs> because this is the reason that I ended up getting into comics. Um, but it, yeah, it was just a really, really enjoyable film. I saw it the day after it opened. Um, uh, it was I saw it on Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> I just thought of that. <laughs> it was so fun. It was written really well. It was a uh, Joss Whedon film. Um, yeah, it introduced me to Joss Whedon, and I uh, went off and like found his other work and really enjoyed those. Uh, it was just. It was just everything that, like, a superhero team-up should be, and um, what I'm hoping for with the Justice League film is coming out in 2017. Yes, uh, to me, Avengers was kind of, I see it for the first time, I really like it, everyone else likes it, the hype is just, I mean, the hype train never stops, it constantly just keeps going and going and going, stays in theaters forever, makes bank, just all around the world. And uh, then I kind of watched it a second time, <laughs> and um, it's very fun, has lots of humor, great action. Um, then you start seeing the stuff that makes it kind of just a, um, a one-time thing, not a movie that you can go back and watch over and over again and laugh at the same parts and um, just you know gasp at the awesome action or plot twist and um, – See, to me, it was like a take the Hulk's joke, you know, thrown around Loki, for instance. The first time, everyone is just dying of laughter. And then the second time, you're kind of like, hmm, that was that was funny the first time. But, uh, so for me, like, hmm. for me, it was I remember a very... being more humorous. Yeah, exactly. For me, I did love it. I thought that they did the best that they could, bring together lots of different heroes, some heroes that we hadn't even seen before that much, such as Hawkeye, and kind of making a very good group where everyone is represented equally on screen. Hawkeye is a hero we've seen, we saw more during that, and then we haven't seen since. Yes. <laughs> so, 
And that's a shame, because he's an interesting character, and they haven't really done that justice in the films. Yeah, they have um, not. He was evil for half the movie. <laughs> I, yeah. It was, like, and he had, like, he had uh, barely a cameo in Thor, the the first Thor. Yeah. Um, it was, it was just, that that's my one nitpick with the movie. That's why it's number five. Yeah. Um, not be- just because of Hawkeye, but because of some of the things you said, but, um, it reignited my interest in superheroes and comics in general, so, uh, on to A-Rod's number four. All right, my number four is Zack Snyder's Watchmen. Mm. Now, once again, I'm gonna have a controversial opinion here, but I actually prefer the movie over the comic book. Now, that, that's, wow. that could just be because I like movies more than books, even comic books, so that oh. it sh- could just be the medium that it's in. But um, the changes Zack Snyder makes, I this is Zack Snyder's best film, in my opinion. Easily his best film. Like You compare this to Man of Steel, and you're like, yeah, I like Watchmen better. <laughs> um, wow. Huh. Even the I was change, not expecting this. The ch- Neither was I. Oh, yeah. Um, the changes that he makes, I think, are for the best, particularly with the ending. Now, Presley, you have no experience with Watchmen, so I don't want to spoil anything here for you. Right. <laughs> we won't spoil it for the audience, of course. Oh, <laughs> I wanted to yell out what the ending was. <laughs> but I I just think all the Snyder, uh, Snyders, <laughs> all the changes that Zack Snyder puts into the movie are positives that actually help the film be a better film instead of being as close to the comic book as it possibly can be. I mean, it made it a... Like, I liked the movie. I didn't think it was a great movie. I I, mean, I love it. I thought it did... Um, it respected the source material pretty well, um, especially the director's cut, which is like three hours long. Yes. Yeah. Um, if you're going to watch Watchmen, watch the director's cut. Definitely. <laughs> Just as long as you have three hours, you can waste. I mean, well, that's people are like watching Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. Yeah. Come on. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not watching those. Uh I have a very short attention span. <laughs> but uh, the casting is spot on for that whole movie. Everyone is cast perfectly, in my opinion. Especially Rorschach and uh, the comedian. Uh, those are probably yes. my two favorite castings. Yes. Um, I don't know. Just overall, it's just Zack Snyder's best movie. It's the, his prettiest looking movie. Even compared to, like, 300. I, I still think Watchmen looks better. But, uh, yeah. I think it's rich and engaging. Um, a couple things <laughs> about this. Okay, I didn't think that the casting of, um, uh, Silk Spectre was that great. They could have just filled that in with literally anyone else. Oh, I liked her! I didn't, I didn't. She was hot, that was better. <laughs> <laughs> I, but I mean, like, the comedian and Rorschach were definitely great casting choices, um, uh, same with uh, Night Owl. I thought Night Owl was yeah. really, really good. Yeah. Um, he was how he was in the comic, where he was just kind of pitiful. Yeah. <laughs> Very pitiful. Um, but also, like, yeah, I don't know. Um, Dr. Manhattan was good. Uh, I just didn't... You see, I didn't like the change of the ending. I like the original ending. Oh, really? Um, yeah, I, with the... Um, thing that i can't <laughs> yeah shout out loud see i i think the ending in the movie it like stuff that they put into the film builds up to that and makes it a little more i don't know in the comic book it just feels kind of out of nowhere i mean they do set it up a little bit but it's just like well this weird thing happened and now everything's changed but in, in the movie yeah, I, I feel like it connects better to what's been happening beforehand yeah i'll have to agree with that though um I just like the the thing it did the original ending, but I mean, yeah, the ending did make a lot more sense with um wh- how the whole movie played out. Um, All right, Presley, uh, we'll give you a chance to talk. What's your number four? <laughs> My <laughs> since you don't know anything about watching. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know. Four is X Men First Class. Woo! Uh, okay. Good choice. Before Great. they rebooted. Before Fox rebooted the X-Men with Days of Future Past in their own special way. Um, we had Spoilers. First, 
<laughs> spoilers. Um, we have X Men First Class, and to me, I love all the recasting of every character. Um, just the plot was very efficient. It was it just I was in the movie. You had Kevin Bacon. Yes, I was in the movie the entire time, pretty much. Um, there was never a downtime for me. Um, I really thought that the entire movie with all of its little cameos with Wolverine and it, it didn't try to be like Wolverine origins with its horrible cameos like Cyclops. <laughs> let's throw in, let's throw in every mutant possible that you will recognize. Instead, they had fun cameos like normal movies <laughs> Yeah, and uh, or like, or like the the part where uh, Jennifer Lawrence turns into her older Mystique self, like Rebecca Romijn. Yeah, yeah, that's that's clever. Exactly. Um, and it first class sets up Days of Future Past, which <laughs> sure is on one of our lists. <laughs> um, and to me, it's just a great, in my opinion, it's a restart. Not Days of Future Past, but yeah. First Class is the restart for me. Um, and yeah, everything about it is great, in my opinion. You see, up until um, that point, I didn't really... I wasn't a huge fan of the X-Men films, but that made me a fan of the X-Men Very films. true. Um, especially Magneto. Oh my Magneto is now one of my favorite villains. <laughs> oh, Fassbender. <laughs> he, did, he was great. And he, made, and he rocked the helmet. He didn't make it look silly. He did. Oh my gosh, and then getting people to understand the origins of the helmet, mm-hmm. and then just, oh man, the way that he kills, um, what's Shaw. his face? Yes, thank you. <laughs> Kevin Bacon. Yes. Call um, Kevin Bacon. Why not? <laughs> uh, just, basically, um, I'm, it's I'm going to count to three. Great. Uh, spoilers all around, but... Yeah, okay, if you haven't is. seen X Men First Class by this point, what what the exactly. heck? Exactly. <laughs> why why haven't you? It's been out for three years. Why are you, you listening can... to this podcast? You, Go watch. You it. can say that about Days of Future. You can Past. say that about Watchmen, kind of. But Days of Future Past was such a hit, in my opinion. Yeah. That, oh my gosh, it, the year it came out, which I can't remember when it came out. Two thousand. Yeah, two thousand eleven. Yeah. That that's what, that I was a weird. It came out three years. That ago. was a weird year. Oh. <laughs> um. Just it was it really was a hit. Do you guys have any thoughts on that movie? What do you got? Mm-hmm. That sets up Days of Future Past. Oh, a lot of the reason I like First Class is to set up Days of Future Past. Yeah, to be I agree. So, yeah. With that set up, my number four is X Men: Days of Future Past. <laughs> hey, Woo! hey, oh, like I I don't know how many times I've watched this movie, and it's been out only a few weeks. <laughs> Months. I don't. No, it's been out like a month, at, at most. Really? It's, yeah, it came out like last, late last month. It's November. Um, yes. Huh. October is when it was released. Oh, you're so... talking. To, you're talking about Blu-ray and DVD, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. I saw it once. Oh, okay. I was, yeah. I was like, I was, he's yeah, not yeah. talking about it in theaters. That just doesn't make any sense. <laughs> like that didn't happen. Yes, you're right. It's been out just weeks on DVD. Um, I don't know how many times I've watched it. It's so good. I just I don't I don't even know like it took everything I liked about First Class and mixed it with um, the original films and stuff and um, by the by this point I had actually read X Men comics so I like actually understood things <laughs> um, so like the beginning when like they're all fighting the Sentinel and they're working together and stuff that was really cool and that was something that like I really really enjoyed because they do a lot of that in the uh, comics especially but we hadn't really seen that a whole lot. Of, like, them, like, because they are a team, and, like, we hadn't seen them working as a team, so I thought that was really cool. And, um, Storm, it's more Wolverine. Storm, lift me into the air with your storm powers, and I'll get on top of the Statue of Liberty to do something. Uh. And, and then they're like, oh, wait, we need Jean Grey to, like, help stabilize. <laughs> oh, no. That was such a. Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> but, uh,. <laughs> That, and then, um, Magneto also didn't look silly in this film. He actually had the, the best, probably, yeah. probably the best costume he's ever had in a cinematic film. All the costumes are great. Like, the superhero costumes, yeah, yeah. they're all great. 
Yeah, like, um, Wolverine has that, like, darkened, like, it still has the blue and yellow, like, in the comics, like, on his suit. Yeah. But, um, uh, I thought that was a really nice touch. Um, I actually like the movie suits in Days of Future Past better than the comic suits. Now. Yeah, me too. Me too, yeah. I don't like the... <laughs> I'm not a big fan of the colorful stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then there's that Quicksilver scene, of course. Yeah, of course. I was about to say, the um, Quicksilver scene. Yeah. Um, even though he is in the movie just for that scene, it doesn't take anything away from the fact that it is amazing, it is hilarious, and it <laughs> um, it just makes the character really who he's supposed to be. I don't think they've ever covered Quicksilver that well. I love the song that they play during that scene too. Yeah. Oh. It's so fitting and it's so it's so easy and listening and stuff and Take that Joss Wheaton. Yeah. Now you have to try and beat <laughs> Brian Singer's Quicksilver. Oh man. Brian singing singer singing. Brian singing. Hey, Brian like Singer or Joss Whedon, everybody. Which one? Who would, who would you pick? Josh Whedon's only had one superhero movie. I can't judge him on one. Yeah, if, if I'm having to judge him on superhero movies, definitely singer. But, I mean, Josh Whedon as a director, come on. I mean, so mm. much better. I mean... Hey, Rudd, have, have you watched Firefly? No, I have not. Oh. I know I probably should. I know I should. It's really good. It's really good. But here's, I mean, the, um, yeah. here's the thing about your singer versus Whedon thing. Singer has mm-hmm. three wonderful X-Men movies and then a mediocre Superman movie. So, and then Wheaton has the Avengers and that's all he's got. So it's not mediocre. It's on my list. <laughs> no, it's not. it's not. Superman returns is not on my list. Oh man. <sighs> Superman returns. <laughs> oh God. We laugh at thee. Mm. I respect Superman returns, but I'm not a fan of it. I respect, I respect what they try. Yes, to do. exactly. But trying, is one thing. Actually doing it is a completely different thing. I agree. Um, yeah, that's all I got to say on Race of Future Past. Anybody else have anything to say? Um, it just that um, I love the Quicksilver scene, but like I said before, that's all he's in it for. <laughs> and uh, just all together, um, I know as like comic book fans will love it. It'll be one of just the... Um, greatest references it's almost like one of these dc tv series took the form of a movie so it can make all these references to so many great uh just moments in the comics um with the sentinel battle and then um like it, it just everything that happens i mean I, I do have to ruin list all of it but there are things that just normal moviegoers will be freaked out about like okay, how can she send Wolverine back in time? Like, why... Because comic books. Exactly, movie. exactly. And why does he, like, cut in and out? Like, really the biggest because... problem a lot of people have with the movie is the very premise of it, that Wolverine can go back in time without going back in time. Yep. Oh, another thing that I just thought of was um, Jennifer Lawrence's portrayal of Mystique in this film is way better than it was in the... Uh, in first class. first class, she was not a strong character, but in this one, she was pretty. Although I didn't agree with a lot of the characters' choices in the movie, they were really stupid. I mean, saying someone's <laughs> a good character and saying that they have good morals are completely different things. Exactly. I 100% agree with everything Magneto is doing. <laughs> Magneto made some valid points. Oh, <laughs> uh, we were referencing. He wasn't right. But... We were referencing the how it should have ended for first class, which you should go watch. Plug in for how it should have ended. Um, <laughs> probably one of my favorites, uh, favorite, <laughs> favorites, uh, another quote from because Presley I'm Davis. <laughs> oh. All right. We moving on. Ahead. Yeah. Moving on to yeah. Alex or I, I read <laughs> something, other, other something. <laughs> okay. Uh, my number three is the dark Knight, And you're probably going, oh. Whoa, why is that not your number one? <laughs> I know why it's not your number one. <laughs> Uh, spoilers i personally know you i know this yes uh the dark knight is objectively speaking it's the best comic book film out there in terms of being a film it is the best now being close to the source material wise no it's not that would probably be like the avengers (laughs) Mm -hmm. but uh 
I have a hard time finding problems with the Dark Knight. I, I it's it. Are there any? <laughs> I mean, uh, besides, it's not like based completely out of the comic. Books. I mean, there, there's like some plot stuff that doesn't quite make sense, like uh, Joker's whole elaborate scheme. Like, it, it, like everything had to work out exactly like. Oh yeah, yeah, for it to work. Yeah, out. like there's yeah. too many assumptions that have to be made. But whatever, whatever. They do that all the time in movies. Watch Skyfall; it's ten times as worse. I've only seen Skyfall. Once. I love Skyfall. What are you no, doing? <laughs> I love Skyfall, but if you follow the guy's plan in the middle yeah. of the movie, it, yeah. it's like the Joker's plan, but it's ten times more complicated. Very true. Because <laughs> they're in England. Yes, of course. <laughs> Their accents make everything more complicated. <laughs> oh man! But um, like when I when it comes to the Dark Knight trilogy, I I don't know. This is the objectively speaking, this is the best one. It's the best film uh, i love pretty much everything about this movie i i like i said i have a hard time finding flaws with it the only reason it's number three is because i just like these other two choices better i like them more true i like i can we all agree that heath ledger is one of if not the best comic book villain portrayal that we've ever seen are we gonna go there live action it's yeah. caused people to wonder whether the Joker should be done again, and whenever that happens, I think you've done something right. I'm not going to comment too much on Dark Knight, because, spoilers, it's higher up on my list. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, I don't want to say this is Christian Bale's best Batman performance, but he is is wonderful in in the Dark Knight. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think a lot of people fail to uh, really have the spotlight on uh, Aaron Eckhart as Harvey Dent. Because the focus is always on Heath Ledger as the Joker. Aaron Eckhart's just as good as Two-Face, in my opinion. Personally, I think he's better as Harvey Dent than he is as Two-Face. Yeah. But, um, well, that's because he has such a short amount of screen time as Two-Face. That's true. Yeah. But, uh, they should have saved him for the third film. Uh, Christopher Nolan did not want to do that. That was the original plan. <laughs> Christopher Nolan was... was it, oh, the original plan was only two movies, right? Yeah. No, because Christopher Nolan's like, I don't even know if I want to do a third movie. So let's have everything end off here. That way, in case we don't do it, there won't be any hanging threads that we have to address. Then the third film happened, and he had to address all those hanging threads. <laughs> yeah. Well, th- it wasn't stuff... He could have just left it, and it would have been fine. But that was just stuff... Mm-hmm. He felt like he wanted to tell another story, so... Yeah. Um... That's all I have to say about The Dark Knight. Uh, it's a yeah, wonderful I film. To say, I won't comment more. I'll comment more later, but um, I guess yeah. we'll move on to my number okay. three. And I don't know. This could be, if you are a fanboy of Rotten Tomatoes, this could be weird for you. But my favorite <laughs> is Amazing Spider-Man 2. Oh, <gasps> my God! <laughs> um, A lot of people don't like this movie. A lot. I don't. A lot of people um, compare it to Spider-Man 3 from 70. <laughs> um, a lot of people say they, um, you know, oh my gosh, I love uh, Garfield. What is that his name? Andrew Garfield? Andrew Garfield. Yeah. Garfield the cat? <laughs> I love Garfield. <laughs> Nothing to do with it, Spider-Man. Um, and that's all they liked about it. But to me, this movie was great in so many ways and I oftentimes have trouble finding things wrong with it. Now that is <laughs> me. Um I am no movie critic. I you typically We have one here. Uh, yeah we do. And I'm sure he'll have lots to say about this movie. But um the first time I watched it, it was a little long. I did think it's okay. It's the longest Spider Man movie. It's the longest it is. one. It is. And I was like, okay, does this all need to be here? Um, do we have a movie that could have been condensed to half its time? Um, and they just wanted it to be, you know, this new era of super long superhero films. <laughs> but, um, when I go back and watch it, everything is there for a reason to build up the ending. And in my opinion, this movie contains the best scene in comic book movies, possibly movies. Because – and that's because I've read Spider- – if you guys don't know, Spider-Man was my first comic, which is weird because I'm not a DC fanboy. Um, or you are I, a DC fanboy. I am a DC fanboy. Yeah. Yes. Um, 
And our next guest is a huge Spider-Man fan and Marvel fan, but we'll get to that later. And Who's also named Alex. Also named Alex. All of our guests will be named Alex. Spoilers. Coincidence? Um, I think not. <laughs> um, But it just... I don't know, should I spoil the ending of Amazing Spider-Man 2 or no? Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Um, <laughs> if if you haven't heard about this from the internet, I mean, it, it, kudos to you. You are living under a rock, my sir. Um, <laughs> but how did you? I haven't seen anything on the internet about how it. How did you find this podcast? <laughs> yeah, how did you find this podcast? Um, but to me, when did you make a wrong turn? <laughs> when Gwen is falling down the clock tower, and it is just a moment frozen in time. Let it go. <laughs> Let it go. <laughs> we have just... I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Alex. Um, no, but when she is falling in that clock tower, and then we have Spider-Man catching her and not being able to save her. See, that's my main theme of this, is that we have the scene to where he's saving all the people from... The, you know, Electro on the guardrail, and he can save all of them. That's kind of Spider-Man's thing, is he can save everyone. It's not, let me save as many people as I can, let me do the best I can. It is, I will be the protector of the city, and no one will die under my watch. And that's kind of who he is, and yet he couldn't save the person he wanted to save the most. And we have that theme throughout the movie, all these scenes building up to us seeing how he cannot afford to lose her. He thinks he can, but by the end of the movie, we just see he is not willing to let her go to London. He cannot stay broken up with her. He resorts to being a stalker <laughs> um, in his fun little way. Um, but if you did not cry during this scene, um, I mean... <laughs> you're you're either a real man or you have no heart. <laughs> what if I'm a real man with no heart? I did not cry during that. So scene. you're a tin man. <laughs> no. Um. Mate, well, maybe. <laughs> no, I mean, oh, wait, I'm not talking about you have to ball. I'm just talking about a tear falling from the eye. I, I got teary eyed. I got teary eyed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's mostly mostly because of Garfield's performance when he's. Ex Exactly, and that's my next point, is that oh, we went from Toby, <laughs> Toby crying, <laughs> uh, just, I get, like, <sighs> chills. <laughs> yeah. Um, Toby uh, makes you laugh, Andrew makes you want to cry with him. He does, He his performance, <laughs> he's a good when, actor, when, I will admit when that. Gwen dies, is phenomenal, and then it doesn't end there. They could have ended it there, I would have honestly been happy with that, but they did something better. They had the foreshadowing of Gwen's speech, and then that came yeah. back into play, and it actually mattered. He wasn't Spider-Man for a while. It had consequences, and then they're bringing him back as this new Spider-Man, and he kind of has um, – they brought a lot more importance to the character, and they really developed who he is. See, that's, that's one thing I was kind of confused about, like people criticizing the movie heavily is like – well, you criticize Man of Steel for being full of no hope. It's just utterly depressing. But Spider-Man ends with this hopeful message after this huge, tragic thing that's happened, and you're just going to hate on it. At least it's trying to be something different. It's not trying to be, ooh, the Dark Knight's dark and gritty. We must be dark and gritty. No, we're, we're trying to stick with the character and what the character's supposed to mean. My major problem with it was it was really long. <laughs> <laughs> that was my major problem with the movie. See, it didn't feel long to me when I watched it. When I watched it the second time, it didn't feel long. In theaters, it actually did feel long. I also didn't like Harry as a uh, Green Goblin. Really, I was just about to say that uh, Dane DeHaan? Yes. Yes, Correct. Dane DeHaan. Um, he killed it in that role. I thought it, his portrayal as the Green Goblin is how he kind of is in the comics. We did not have that in the original Spider-Man trilogy. I don't think we, we had, had James a Franco. Goblin. Uh, well, we, we had did, James Franco. I didn't oh, like his Green Goblin. I really didn't. I'm going to save you, buddy o pal friend. <laughs> um, yeah, but Dane, I mean, he just... I think that Green Goblin and him just being insane and that true hatred of Spider-Man... I mean, his eyes... Spider-Man 
doesn't want to help him. He is selfish. Uh, he doesn't care about Spider-Man's motives. And that just drives him to want to ruin his life. Which is... It's not like Joker and Batman. It's not like Joker just wanting to have fun with Batman by ruining him. The, the Green Goblin actually wants to ruin Spider-Man's life and eventually kill him after he's taken everything. And to me, I think that was well portrayed here. You see, I think I would have liked that more if they didn't have Electro in there, too. Yep, that's what I was about to say. Like, yeah, yeah I mean, and then we Electro get to Electro. Kinda... I, I was going to say, Presley, you're only pointing out half a movie here. You have to deal with the <laughs> other half, which is not that great. Mm. Uh, the second half, I will admit, was better than the first exactly. half. But the first half just kind of killed the whole thing. I, I was uncomfortable with <laughs> Electro. Um, mm. It, that was That's the movie, thing. totally. Thanks, Spider-Man. It, it was very interesting to see Jamie Foxx in that role. I think um, that was good, great acting. The character, however, was not Horrible. so great. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I don't think you can blame this on his acting. I think you. Have no, to, I don't blame it on him. I blame it on the writing. Exactly, you have to blame it on the writing. They didn't know how to get through an entire movie. Um, I think from the screenwriters Orsi and Kurtzman, who wrote the first two Transformers movies. <laughs> Yay! I, I thought I, I I might have the minor, minority opinion, but I kind of liked the whole um, dubstepy <laughs> electro. Um, I don't, it was it was well. Um, it felt really just amazing like they nobody had ever done pun intended before. <laughs> unintended pun face palm <laughs> um but as for electro's character we get something very shallow and not so great <laughs> yeah he's just weird it is weird see, he's he's just weird see my problem with it is mostly if you take electro out of the movie the movie works much better just take him mm-hmm. out i agree but if you're going to have him in there, you need to have the tone of your movie to match up properly. It's like, okay, we have yeah. the we have the Spider-Man scenes, and then we have these goofy, dumb Electro scenes, which are just horrible to sit through. Happy birthday. <laughs> it's time to uh, – it's my birthday. It's time to blow out my candles. And he says stupid one-liners like that. It's like, what are you doing? <laughs> we understand how birthdays work. <laughs> and, then he, and then he's doing like the dubstep thing of the Itsy Bitsy Spider music. And Spider-Man's like, like, I that. hate this song. It's like – it's too goofy. Yeah, I like the first dubstep stand. I, oh, I yeah. should have mentioned that. I didn't like the second one. The first one – um, and then I, I did like how they, if they would have made his mental illness a little bit more serious. Yes. Um, and not drunk less comedy. for laughs. Exactly. Uh, they could have had comedy somewhere else. They did have comedy somewhere else. Like, I actually love the scene where he um, is having to get, like, out of his costume before Aunt May comes in the room. Yeah, and he funny. has and he has that dialogue with her. I laugh at that every time. I personally think that's really great. But then we have Electro. If you would have made his mental illness a little bit more serious, and then tied that in like they did to him hitting Spider Man, I think that's great. But then after that, it's just kind of, I hate Spider Man. I love him. Now I hate him. It, it's just it's not very yeah. deep. It's pretty shallow. I have one weird nitpick of the thing I. This is the thing I would take out. Um, uh, when when Electro's captured and he's put in Ravencroft, the doctor, Dr. Kafka, I hate that character with a fiery passion. So I stereotypical. hate him so much. I'm stereotypical German doctor. Whatever. <laughs> it's yeah. like, what movie am I watching? <laughs> it seems like those that eventually made people hate, hate it. I mean, dislike it. I don't think anyone really hated Amazing Spider-Man 2. It did pretty well. But they're just kind of like, eh, this is an okay movie. The better, the first one was better. And we're starting to build up this, uh, what is Amazing Spider-Man 3 going to be like? Are we going to have a, you know, Tobey Maguire set up again? So, like, Sony's running around with their with their heads cut off. They have no idea what they're doing now. So the Sinister Six, I mean... Uh, they're they're all, they've been like saying all this stuff, but now they're like, I don't know, like oh, we don't know if we're making any of this. Hey, let's make an Aunt May movie. Which they officially that, that's debunked. That is debunked. 
<laughs> uh, but if that would have been true, it honestly Nobody would see might, it. It might have made me like not respect Amazing Spider-Man two. You know, it's like they have like epic music in the trailer and stuff, and then you see Aunt May come up on the screen. But what would you do with that movie? Nobody but, would see it. It would exactly. make five dollars. Total. <laughs> it, it wouldn't. It wouldn't even make the full price of an admission ticket to the theater. <laughs> I, what I'd want out of that movie is just Sally Field eating like a bowl of cereal. The whole time. <laughs> yeah. Why not? Or doing laundry. <laughs> I mean, no one's gonna see it anyway. Oh man. She does Spider Man's laundry for two hours. Let's watch that. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be pretty funny. Um, Peter. Oh, that is an Peter, you turn the clothes red and blue again. Oh, sorry, Aunt May. Just have that happen five or six times. It'll get yeah. so many laughs every single time. Of course. Amazing oh, Spider-Man yeah. 2, I, I like a lot. I, I, I'm I more on Presley's side than Alex's side here. Cause I, mm. But it's it's mostly just Electro. Mm-hmm. Very Throughout true. the movie, you give, a, you give a lot more screen time to developing uh, Harry and Peter's relationship, which is kind of... Yeah. It needs yeah. to be worked on a bit. And then Harry's transformation into the Goblin itself... Uh, I think it's okay the way it works in the movie, but there's not enough time for it to work the way it should. You see, my thing about this movie is that I feel like they got like 20 different writers. Which they did. Told them the basic, they pretty much they did. Basic, they pretty much did. They told, them, <laughs> they told them the basic premise of the movie, and then <clears throat> they put them all in their own rooms and told them to write each part of the movie, and then they put it all together. It does sometimes feel That's like how that. it felt to me. I didn't. That's... I didn't get that impression when I watched it the first time. Like when I posted my review of it, I was like, "I don't get why people are hating this." And then I watched it a couple more times. I was like, "Yeah, the Electro stuff's not working. Doctor Kafka's the worst thing ever." I kind of <laughs> was the opposite. The first time, I didn't love it. Saw the last scene, it, it yeah. was raving about it, and then I watched it a second time, and I had more of a, um, not critical, but like, just logical view of it it wasn't just me loving the ending and rationalizing the rest of it it was me okay here's what i like about it here's what i don't and this is what happens after analyzing all of it but i don't know that's all i really have to say about the movie the last thing i'll say is um i really feel like my biggest problem with it is when i watch it i'm like i know how i would improve this i know how i would fix this that way a lot more people would like it and that's just kind of irksome whenever i watch it now but I still enjoy it. It's very entertaining. I'll give it that. <laughs> Anyways, um, I guess getting on to Alex's third. Oh, is it my turn? Want... Uh, uh, other oh, Alex. My turn. This, yeah. this, that, Not yeah. um, <laughs> you see, <laughs> I forgot the order. Three. This is we're number three, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You see, my number three. Uh. <laughs> I can't really say like I I said a little bit too much about Amazing Spider-Man two for me to really say anything about this one because my number three is Man of Steel. I approve. I approve of this I, message. <laughs> I I really really liked Man of Steel. Hey. I I am not. I am wearing a Man of Steel T-shirt right now. So yeah, there's that. <laughs> That's. I thought I okay. I I didn't really like Superman at all going into this movie. This movie made me like Superman. See, that's that's my argument. For people that hate this movie, that's my argument. Mm-hmm. I, it made me like Superman. Yeah. I don't know, like... I, like... Sure, there were a lot of problems with it. Yes. There were a, there were many problems with it. Um, but I enjoyed it so much. Like, that... Like, I mean... Henry Cavill, first of all, was a good choice for Superman. I think he... Like, I don't think that they showed off enough of his acting. Because I think he's better than what they showed. Yeah. Um, I really want to see in um, Batman v Superman, like him being Clark Kent versus him being Superman in particular, because um, at the end of the movie, he is just like, oh, yeah, I'm Clark Kent. I wear glasses. <laughs> That's really about it. He, he's like not really much different. And um, yeah, yeah, uh, fact that his, this movie, yeah, wait, wait. I was just going to say, and the fact that his dad died because of a dog. I mean, I love dogs as much as the next person, but. I really? don't understand. Really, it's, it's really change for the sake of change because they could have just yes. done it the way they did it in the original movie, where he has a heart, a heart attack. attack, and it's, uh, and it's why some, not a heart attack. It is something Superman cannot stop, no matter what. Mm-hmm. That's all, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was also in um, 
after the after Man of Steel, I ended up going to read uh, All Star Superman, yeah. which is like drew they drew a lot out of for Man of Steel. Then they kind of like put it in a blender <laughs> and then press the puree button yeah. <laughs> and then poured it in a cup and then said, "Hey, Zack Snyder, put do something with this." And then yeah, um, I was going somewhere with that for a second. <laughs> But um, they have that whole, like, you'll be a uh, symbol of hope. You'll give the people of Earth something to strive towards. That was all from um, All-Star Superman, uh, written by Grant Morrison. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, uh, it really, like, but my main thing is it made me like Superman. Uh, sure, he killed Zod at the end, but I thought, like, I think that the way they're setting it up is that he killed Zod just... So like later on he won't anymore. No, that's and he was distraught about Zach it. Zack Snyder said that he's like, well, he's got to have that no killing rule from somewhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because he was super distraught about it. Too. It goes yeah. along with New Fifty Two comics. Mm-hmm. Um, like um, I, that's not what happens in the New Fifty Two, but that's kind of his personality. Yeah, is mm-hmm. I know what I can do, and therefore I must not ever reach my full potential. Yeah, that's like I mean. It's also my favorite, probably, my fa- it's definitely my favorite Superman movie, but it's also maybe the best live-action Superman movie. I'm not a huge fan of the Christopher Reeve films. I'm just going to go I like Christopher that. Reeve, I but I, I don't know. <laughs> I didn't like the movies that much. I think I was like, I don't know. I don't know why I don't like them. I, I, I like the original, them. and then it just gets worse. <laughs> yeah, from there. They were just too... The first one was good. I heard them. I think they were made for a different generation. Yeah. And that's well, I mean, that's like, a, what a lot of people ha- have a hard time accepting. It's like, this is not this is not your Superman. This is the new generation Superman. Exactly. This isn't your daddy's Superman. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Um, like, I, I will say that I did not like Zod. Um, oh, really? Yeah. Just as a character, I think there are a lot uh, more Superman villains to go off of and yeah. I, I get Zod in the movie but you see my me, my thing was like yeah go ahead my, ne- my next point was gonna be that Zod was my it was a really good choice and I wouldn't have put his, anyone else his in his portrayal movie. was great in the movie I'm not like saying that in the movie I didn't like Zod I'm saying that like as Superman villains go Zod probably is my least favorite and <laughs> therefore like I mean, I guess we kind of have, like, you got to tackle the origin villain. Kind of yeah. like in Batman Begins, mm-hmm. we have Ra's al Ghul, and now we have God, Grod, not, not Grod, Zod. Grod. <laughs> Grod. Grod is in Superman. Um, I just love that he keeps saying, I will find him over and over again for no reason. Oh, yeah. I also like that they're set, starting to set up from Man of Steel the whole DC cinematic. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I think it was a good starting point because once you go Superman, it's easy to like, like, like once you establish that the Superman exists in this world, it's easy to go down to like a Wonder Woman or like an Aquaman or something. When like you, when there's like that character who's like really kind of broken the suspension of disbelief already, yeah. like wide open. Like, I think it's easier to build down. Like if they started with Batman, then they'd have to keep like they have to like keep stretching it and stretching it. I feel like. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah. Now, with, when it comes to Man of Steel, once again, I have two flaws with the movie. Two main flaws. Uh-huh. Uh, mm-hmm. The obvious one to go to is the destruction. And let's face it, there is just too much destruction. I know, realistically, if there were two aliens fighting each other like that, yes, there would be that much destruction. But, Zack Snyder, you're just going too far. You're beating Michael Bay here, and that is not a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's never a good thing. You just destroyed yeah. a whole city and half Earth. Yeah. If you're going to think about like what those two dubstep machines did. Yes. And <laughs> that the destruction really leads into my second flaw, which is uh-huh. they have the whole line in the trailer of, you know, uh, Jor-El's like, you will give the people for something to strive for, uh, tr- strive for, and this means hope, the S. <laughs> the movie doesn't really give off that mess. Which, I know know they're setting up the whole idea that originally everybody hates Superman, they blame him for all the destruction and everything, and that he'll have to rise up to the occasion and really prove that he's the hero they need. But, I don't know, for a standalone movie, 
the the messages and the themes don't really connect that well. Yeah, I think that that's another thing that I think they're gonna like. Um, that I think they should and will expand upon yeah. in the fall in the films to come. Like they'll be like, oh, this actually the, like, all the destruction had ramifications. Yeah. Um, like everything like meant something. Um, I think that's like they have their eyes looking forward for the whole thing, and I don't think people really realized that. Yeah. When this movie came out, they're just like, oh, it's a Superman movie. It's like, oh, what? <laughs> well, that, that that's a problem you could point out. It works better as part of a whole, we're assuming, than it does on its own. Mm-hmm. Especially with the, oh, he's not Clark Kent until the last five seconds of the movie. Yeah, like, yeah. I did like that last scene, though. Oh, yeah, it's great. Like, it's weird. Welcome to the planet. It's weird. The Hans Zimmer theme does a better job of conveying the messages of the film than the film itself. How does the music do a better job than that Flight? That score. Yes. Flight. That score makes me happy. I listen to Flight probably once a day. I I, I have um. What are you gonna do when you when you're not saving the world? Yeah. I like uh, I like that one better than Flight personally. Rick. Because it's got the full. I like the score. Um, I mean, but to me, it's such a good to score. To me, I just like flight. That's that. That's my like one. It, it's the one that I uh, listened to the most before the movie came out. That I heard it in the mm-hmm. movie, and I saw the scene, and I listened to it after the movie. I don't know. It's probably my favorite Hans Zimmer song. Uh, either that or time. That 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 okay. that song, like in that scene in itself. Um, that that did the best job of conveying what they were like the whole people of like, exactly to give someone give people hope and stuff um, that, than the rest of the movie and, did no and that's that's my point like I don't I that's a, that's a compliment to the film score but that's kind of a flaw of the movie mm-hmm. so Hans Zimmer is amazing though. yeah oh yeah, yeah. totally <laughs> my favorite mo- film composer so uh, yeah Man of Steel is not a, a perfect movie by any means but I I why I I would I would say I love it. I love Man of Steel. So I love Man of yeah. Steel too. Yeah. I, I think that would probably be in my top ten. I know we just did our top five, but that would probably be my top yeah. ten. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. Are we moving on? Yes. yes. You're number two. Okay, where's my number two? Okay. I'm repeating. X Men Days of Future Past. Number two. Hey. Um mostly the 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 fact that I love this so much comes out of my hatred for X Men three. <laughs> If you've been on my channel at all, you will see that my highest viewed video is my X-Men 3 commentary, which is me just yelling into a horrible microphone for an hour and 45 minutes about how much I hate that movie. <laughs> oh, man. It's very entertaining. Go watch it. And, watch the movie while it's, while it's yeah. playing. It's great. And X-Men Days of Future Past just fixes everything. It's great. But not only does it do that, it tells a great story too. So I got twofold. It's it's wonderful. That's why it's number two. <laughs> but uh. all the acting is great. Uh, I like that. Even though Wolverine's the guy who's sent back into the past, it's not really about him. It's about McAvoy and Fassbender and their relationship. That he, that is what wins the movie. That's, he's a good that's vehicle the for the story. Yes. But Which is what he should be. See, see, this is – okay. This is why I like the movie so much. If you were to look at it as a story being told or like something being written, like I bet if you just looked at the writing for this movie, you would be like, wow, this is great. You have like Wolverine as a vehicle for the story to move along, but he's not the star. And that's kind of how X-Men comics work. Wolverine's not the star, but he's always a great way to get it moving. Yeah. And then we have Xavier and my, uh, Magneto. Magneto and just everyone working. And we don't have a huge cast of mutants um, and it, everything works and we don't have any scenes that are just pointless. Yeah. And it, and it contains lots of action, but not mindless action. Yeah. Uh I have a hard time coming up with complaints for this one, too. Uh, it was such a good movie. Mostly the last scene, just that last scene where he wakes up back in the future and everything's fixed. I, I was losing my mind in the theater. I was losing it. You see, I teared up during that. <laughs> like, he, like, grabs Cyclops by the shoulder and he's like, 
it's good to see you, Scott. Of course, Cyclops is wearing those <laughs> stupid looking glasses. Those <laughs> are the, has Oakley's the, the now. jeans there. Yeah. And that's that kind of made that scene for me. It's just how everything's just like it's not some big return of Jean Grey. It's just everything is as it should be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what I got. It was it was uh. Yeah. You know how that was such a good movie. Do you guys know how I knew this movie would be good? How? How? <laughs> uh, when? Uh, uh, sorry, there was a bit of a delay. Uh, when they start oh. the opening credits and uh, they start the DNA sequencing from the first three movies, and then they have and then the X two. Yes, I I was like <laughs> I was losing my shit in the theater. I kid you not. I I had goosebumps every time I watch the movie. Now I get goosebumps when it reaches that part. Mm-hmm. Oh, I know. Like that Patrick Stewart narration. Yes. Is, oh, that was such a good movie. <laughs> yes, and I, I know it's kind of embarrassing for me to say that, but uh, everybody's got their own hobby, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, no, I'm in the exact same way when that music starts playing. I was like, oh my, oh my god, gosh. they brought it back. Is is this real? <laughs> is this on? <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. No, I, I, was, I also saw that movie in a great theater. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that'll help. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. I listen. You listen to the Man of Steel flight theme like every day. I listen to the um, Days of Future Past theme every day. Like <laughs> I listen to both every. Day. I need that. I need the it's Days of Future theme. Past theme on full volume to get the full impact. And oh my gosh! Every time, goosebumps. <laughs> I love that theme. I love that theme. Yes. Oh god. My only regret is that they don't use it more in the movie. <laughs> I know, right? Just have it playing. And it's so short. short. Yeah. It's so short that they do play. Yeah. But uh, hey, other than I'm excited for whatever else this this particular team working on Days of Future Past has next, so I'm bring it on, Apocalypse, bring it on. I heard it's supposed to be set in the '80s. Yes, um, pretty that excited. Be which which is actually a problem I have. <laughs> mm-hmm. Funny, I should say, bring it on, Apocalypse, and then I have a complaint about that because. <laughs> Fastman or McAvoy, they're only aging like two or three years between these movies, and you want to age them decades with each mm-hmm. subsequent movie. I, yeah, that doesn't quite work with me. I, I thought between First Class and uh, Days of Future Past that the um the change was really really good because I thought it was necessary. Even Fassbender looked older. I thought it was necessary because you have to set up all the stuff with Professor X pretty much losing everything. Yeah. What if they bring back like Ian McKellen and Stewart? <laughs> the CGI their faces like in the last stand. Well, that's oh my God. that's one of the that's that's one of the confusing things about the end of the movie. I, we're going spoilers. If you haven't seen this movie, uh, oh no, we'll no. <laughs> uh, when Wolverine's like, "All right, tell me what happened between you know the seventies and now." Are are Mystique and Magneto dead? Are they there somewhere in the mansion? I mean, what's what's the deal with that? Oh. So pretty much, I'm just. I just want to know what happens in between those 50 years, just like Wolverine does. So, Yeah, we've got a lot of catching up. Yeah, you. especially <laughs> since the timeline's completely changed now, so pretty much anything could happen, except yeah. we know that certain characters can't be dead. Mm-hmm. Exactly. But whatever! <laughs> but, I mean, I guess we're going to see that in Apocalypse. Yeah. Like, we're going to see what, like, 10 years of that span uh, will have been. I, I want it to be just very heavy, important, and jaw-dropping, because Apocalypse in the comics just brings this air of, like, this is insane. He is just too powerful to stop. The Justice League have Darkseid, the Avengers have Thanos, the X-Men, X-Men have Apocalypse. Have Apocalypse. Yes, he needs to be like Thanos. He needs to just be huge. He needs to be, like, even combined, how are we going to defeat him? Just that classic mm-hmm. feeling. And if they the can real que- that off, yeah. Then, yeah. The real question is, did Apocalypse show up in the original timeline? Did he ever show up at all? Yeah. He's like, nah, everyone like messed with the time stream, and I know about it because I'm Apocalypse, so I'm not going <laughs> to mess with them. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds about it, right. It, that's X-Men, though. We just have those, you know, plot holes. Yeah, I know. And, and Brian Singer at one point he's like, "Yes, there's still some stuff that doesn't quite make sense, but you know, we've got a new timeline now. Just go with it." Okay, sure. I like that he acknowledged that. <laughs> yeah, I really like that he acknowledged that too. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that's that's my that's my bit on X Men: Days of Future Past. I'm sure when I do my commentary, eventually I'll have tons more to talk about. But right now, that's that's all I got. 
check out Storyline Films on YouTube. <laughs> in the description. All right, but um, I guess I'm your turn, Presley. To, to my number two, and if you know either me or Alex, you'll know that we love Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, that's my number two. Too. Oh my gosh! So I guess Alex and I can just kind of rant on this together. I love everything about this movie. I think this is the movie. Mm. I, I I might have had this at number one, but my number one is just like probably my favorite movie of all time. But this movie, I think after it came out in theaters, I listened to the soundtrack every day for at least two weeks to a month. The original soundtrack or like the awesome mix? The, uh, the awesome one? mix volume. Sorry, the awesome mix volume one. Um, well, slash two. <laughs> Because it has uh, Awesome Mix 2 on the soundtrack. Yeah. It's released on iTunes as Awesome Mix volume. Exactly. So you're just going to go with yeah. that. Um, that is just, in my opinion, a great representation of like 70s, 80s music. Oh, I love it. Mm. I, I'd heard those songs as a kid just because, I don't know, that's what my friends and I listen to. You grew up in the 70s. I, <laughs> Presley Davis is an old man. I have an old man. I know it doesn't say it. I just got into college. It took me years, but... Um, <laughs> um, but yes, fifth grade, I mean, man. I, it, it was it was fifth grade. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I just love the soundtrack, and then all of the funny scenes. Um, I think my favorite oh, scene from the movie, which some people might have other favorite scenes, was Rocket and Groot fighting in the prison. The whole prison scene was my favorite, but when oh, Rocket get, gets thrown yeah. in the gun, yes, Bradley Cooper. <laughs> Bradley Cooper in that scene was incredible, and then Groot is just Groot's funnier than the Hulk, so much funnier. Um, and then he's a better character than the Hulk. And then, and then we have Drax. I thought Drax did. I, are you saying this is a bad? No, thing? just his um, literal take on everything makes for just endless. Hilarious scenes, and, and I like this movie nothing, mostly because nothing it's so goes funny. over my head. I have quick <laughs> I reflexes, reflexes, and I would catch it. Oh, uh, I've I've seen that movie four or five times, and I still laugh at it. You are an imbecile. <laughs> <laughs> the casting of a re- professional wrestler was perfect as it, like, because mm-hmm. I had um, watched wrestling in middle school, so I knew who this guy was, oh. and I'm like, he's gonna be this guy. And then I was like, oh, he did really actor. well. I think it's because they made that character what it is. Why are you putting your finger on your head? <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Chris Pratt is not one of my favorite actors, but I love Parks and Recreation. Um, I thought he was pretty awesome in Zero Dark Thirty. Um, mm-hmm. And then in this movie, it was kind of his take as, like, he went from being kind of this, like, slum funny guy in Parks and Rec, and he, he um, looked at his trainer, and he was like, I want to look like a superhero. And he did. He, like, put so much into effort into being Star-Lord. And that's who he kind of is. <laughs> exactly. And we have just... He is hilarious. He's badass. He's just amazing in every respect um, in this movie. And his supporting cast is so much better than Avengers. Um, just how they all come together randomly on um, Xandar. It's great. Um, <laughs> that Every single one of the fight scenes or any of the scenes, um, just when he gets back to his ship after retrieving the orb and um, his friend is in the ship. His friend, quote unquote, is, is in the ship, and just all these great scenes and um, mixed with the action and the great acting. Just uh, and it's not that long either. It, no, it has it like zero crazy. fluff. It was like, oh my gosh, I can't say enough good things about this movie. <laughs> um, but I'm gonna try. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try to say as many as I possibly can without going over what time we have. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I, I saw this movie twice in theaters in successive weekends. Um, I saw it w- the one weekend with my dad 
and he he's not a comic book person he's not a nerd um he loved the movie he was like that is one of the best movies i've seen in a long time um so yeah it was it knew what it was go like you could see from the trailer that like they knew what tone they're trying to uh, implement on it, and they carried that through. They didn't make it too serious, although there were serious moments. Like that first like fifteen minutes was, yeah, like, heart wrenching. Uh-huh. <laughs> With his mom and um, oh gosh, um, uh, yeah, I just I did. There wasn't a character I didn't like in the movie either. That's another thing. Um. My my like the character I liked least was probably the villain though. Ronan. Wait, Nebula Ronan or uh, Ronan. Ronan. I like I like Nebula. I was just like there are multiple villains, so I was kind of like. No, no, the villain. I guess yeah. The villain. Are there multiple villains? Well, you can kind of say Thanos, Nebula. Thanos wasn't the villain. He was just kind of like, oh yeah, I'm sitting back here. My only yeah, was my main problem with it was like we knew Thanos was out there, so we knew that this guy was like. Um, really not the biggest threat in the galaxy. So, yeah, I don't, like. I but mean, they made Thanos that, just who he is supposed to be in the comics in this movie. We're like, wow, that everyone's like, don't mess that with quote Thanos. to where he was just like, your politics bore me. <laughs> your um, just oh my gosh, it, he just treats Ronan. Like, such a minuscule threat. And then the size difference, too. And then the camera angle of Ronan just being this tiny little figure on an asteroid. Mm. You're right, though. It does really bring down how... But then they build that back up when they shoot Ronan with Rocket's gun that's supposed to just be this incredible gun. And then it just leaves a little, like, dent on his chest. And then when the like the whole ship comes crashing down and stuff at the end. Exactly. Um, which leads to another one of my favorite scenes where star Lord is dancing yes. and singing to Ooh child. See normal in a normal movie that would have been like, Oh, this is so cheesy. But in this movie it was like, wow. <laughs> Cause so much heavy stuff had just happened exactly. and they're like, Hey, let's dance and sing. And then, and then Gamora just like nods her head. No, like, Subtle, take what? it back. <laughs> uh. I can't, oh, uh, yeah. That was a good movie. I have three, no, no, I only have two Guardians of the Galaxy t-shirts. <laughs> only two. Uh, only two. Only two. Only two. Um, I thought I had three for a second, but no, I don't. I ended up getting an Aquaman shirt instead. Uh. Uh. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's all I got to say about Guardians of the Galaxy. I mean, you can just go watch it and... It definitely, if I had to recommend one movie right now to someone, it would be Guardians of the Galaxy. Mm-hmm. I'll uh, just say uh, <laughs> Guardians is my second favorite Marvel Cinematic Universe film. Uh, it, so is it like number six? <laughs> no, probably not, but it would be in my top ten. I'll put it that way. Not many Marvel Cinematic Universe movies are in my top ten, but, you know, that's just me. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know. Every time I watch it, I'm just like, that. That's just a good movie. That's just it's just entertaining. That yeah, I would I would say it's easily the most entertaining movie I've seen all year. Oh yeah, definitely. It, it's definitely my favorite movie of the year. I still think X Men's better, but that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm torn between those two. My list is just kind of if this year was good. I'm torn, but those those two like because with X Men you had like the heart wrenching stuff and like the feels and like it. Really the resonated. Feels. With you. But then Guard- the feels. But see, this. And then with Guardians yeah, but... was like just so good. And I think because Guardians is more fresh in my memory. Um, Probably. That I put it up higher. This year we just had I really guess. good movies. We had Winter Soldier. We had Guardians. We had Days of Future Past. Um, we had Amazing for Spider-Man. For you, too. together, DC. <laughs> no, Presley, for you, you had Amazing Spider Man too. so. <laughs> yeah. So, this year's been good. Get it together, DC. <laughs> We want to see these movies being your movies coming out. Yeah. Give them two years. Just give them two years. They got this. That's all. I I am March March 25th, 2016. I am going to see Batman v Superman. Like, the opening night. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And if it, like, and I'm, oh, man. Oh, man. I am. That's all. That's that's more than a year away. I, that's a year and five I months. want people to not know about Suicide Squad, just like they didn't know Guardians of the Galaxy. And I want it to be... It's in its own respect, 
a Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. That's what... what if, I just don't... I, <laughs> wait, what? Sorry, Alex, what were you going to say? What if Batman vs. Superman sucks? Then all of this is just a waste of time. It will not suck. <laughs> it cannot. They, I have too much writing on this film. They Everyone it. does. It has to be good. No, it, it time... has to be good. Otherwise, this whole cinematic universe is... I don't think they got anything to go on. Aquaman. 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 <laughs> They'll just do solo Aquaman. Aquaman movie to the end of time. Yes. <laughs> just it, not even like that is my dream. Not even Aquaman two. It'll just be Aquaman and then like a different t- little title under it. <laughs> It'll just be Jason Momoa punching stuff. Uh, Aquaman. For, like, Aquaman the saves the whales. <laughs> Aquaman takes on oil. <laughs> all right, all right. We get your excitement, Aquaman or Aqualad. Aqualad. <laughs> Am I the black one? Can I be the black yes. one? Sure. Three sure. Yay. Um, but to get off of the tangent. Um... All right. Have we entered number one territory? Uh, we wait, have. David. And I think I have a feeling all three of ours are similar. Oh, okay. Uh, all right. Uh, I got to I gotta warm up here. Up to bat. Up to bat. Okay. My number one. <laughs> My number one fa- favorite superhero movie is The Dark Knight Rises. And I know everybody's going to be going, why isn't it Dark Knight? Why do you like that movie more? You're not a true film lover. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say it this way. Batman Begins is the best Batman movie we got. Be- best Batman movie we've ever gotten. Mm-hmm. The Dark Knight is the best, critically speaking, the best film we have ever gotten. That's based on Batman. Dark Knight Rises is the best emotional experience I have had with a Batman movie. <laughs> You want to talk about feels? I had that all over this movie. <laughs> A-Rod a- is the reason that I saw about, uh, The Dark Knight Rises. Really? Actually. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he is the reason. So, yeah. That, that, um, that is the only time I have cried in the theater at the end of a movie. Oh. Uh, end of Dark Knight Rises. Toy Story 3. <laughs> I, I got close, but this was like full... Oh, he's in the, Dark he's Knight in Rises, thing. man. He's in the he's in the the cafe with Alfred. Yes, <laughs> that was uh, that was something else. That was uh, that was a great ending. And, and then sure, you I you could ending. be a nitpicking asshole and be like, well, how did Bruce get to that cafe and how did he know where to sit so Alfred would come in and look at him? Just, no, no, you go with the experience. You <laughs> don't ask too many questions. <laughs> I uh, mean. Yes, you can. Qu- there are plot holes all over this movie. I will grant you that. The bomb logic makes no sense. How did he get back to Gotham? I don't care about awesome. that. I whatever. He He's Batman. <laughs> he walked. No, no, but like they say, like the the bomb's like a four megaton nuclear bomb that would take out like half the East Coast. There's no way he's getting that out over over the bay, quote unquote. Mm-hmm. Um. But the, the fusion reactor, that's actually based in some physics stuff, so whatever. But, um... Ta- We're not physicists. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Talia is a complete waste of time. She's just, oh, oh yeah. it's a twist! <laughs> but it completely takes away most of Bane's characterization. But can yeah. I just say, I enjoy Bane just as much as I do Heath Ledger's Joker. Can I say that? <laughs> I did, too. I did, too. I quote um, Bane all the time. <laughs> so do I. It's just his voice. It's great. Yeah. See, that's one thing. Batman Rises, or Dark Knight Rises. Batman, Batman, Batman. Rises. Um, that sounds really, much more lame. A lot of people talk about Bane, but it brought the movie a lot of like publicity, and yeah. so I'm not that mad at it. <laughs> Perhaps he's wondering why someone would shoot him at. I don't know. I just, I just started not liking the voice as much when he was talking on the football field. I was like, Oh, yeah, that was the biggest I was problem. sitting there, and I was like, okay, I honestly don't understand a word he's saying right now. This is stupid. It's complaining like, I don't... Everybody's like, I don't get what he's saying. And I I understood everything just fine. But that's he's, just me. He's using a mask, talking through a microphone, on crappy stadium speakers. <laughs> I heard him fine. I don't get it. When I went back and watched it again, I did understand him fine. Oh, what? But in the theater, I couldn't understand him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, on DVD, you understand him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Put some subtitles on that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, but su- I... Subtitles just say, like, ununderstood dialogue. 
undistinguishable dialogue. Um, yes. Can, can I just point out something that a lot of people like making fun of Dark Knight Rises for? A lot of people like saying, hey, Batman's barely in this movie. They do. Yeah. That shows me you don't care about the character at all, because whether he's in the costume or not, you should care about this Bruce Wayne. You should care about this version of Bruce Wayne. Very good point. Yeah. So I feel like you don't – you just like the Batman Begins in the Dark Knight because, hey, it's Batman beating up people, that, which makes yeah. your opinion a lot less valid in my <laughs> in my opinion. If, if, if you want that, just go play the Arkham games and just do the challenge maps and yes. beat the crap out of people yeah. for like 20 hours. <laughs> yeah. Do it while listening to dubstep. It's 20 times more fun. <laughs> uh, it does go along with a lot of dubstep. I loved, I love how Scarecrow is in every one of these movies and how he's just this random hilarious judge. <laughs> See, that's that's something I'm kind of sad about because um, if Heath Ledger were still alive, Joker should have been the judge. <sighs> yeah, he should have been. Definitely. And if I had not my way... I would take Talia out, and the Trigger Man would be Joker. He'd be the one with, holding the trigger the whole time. He just, like, takes over Bane's operation, perfect. and he's just, like, making some joke about the bomb, and it just he does his Joker thing. Yeah. Some days you just can't get rid of a bomb. <laughs> yes. <sighs> uh, something like this. If he had said that line, oh my god. No, but the, when, when Batman's beating up Bane, he's going, where's the trigger? And, and Bane's like, oh, we both know who I gave it to. Man. Who wants? Who wants the destruction of the city literally in the palm of their hand? And Batman's like, "Oh, you did it." And he's like, "Yeah, I did." And then, and then when the Joker doesn't work, the Joker just could just laugh. Yeah, <laughs> just roll on the floor laughing, and that's that's the last we see of the character. To me, that would be so perfect. Yeah, that would have been great. Yeah, because we because he is locked away in prison and we don't know where he is, so that would have yeah. totally worked mm-hmm. out. That would have been that would have been Joker's character to just come in at the least expected moment, but yet the perfect moment. Yeah, but whatever problems you have for most of the movie, those last five minutes, those five freaking minutes are that's what makes it my number no, my number one. It is my favorite movie of all time because of those five minutes. <laughs> Those are a good five minutes. They, oh Those are a gosh. great five minutes. And then, and then just, I liked how we have just a slight nod to Robin. Yeah. No, but seriously, though, I bought into the hype when when they play the trailer and, and she's like, you've given the city everything. And he's like, not everything, not yet. I actually bought into the hype. I was like, if one person's going to have the balls to kill off Batman, it would be Nolan. And then I'm watching it and I'm like, okay, he's gone. I'm going to have to accept that. And then you see Alfred walk into the cafe and I'm like, Oh no, he's not there, is he? And then he is, and I, I lost my freaking mind. It, it's great. It was, it was, it was pretty. Awesome. Single greatest theater experience I have ever had. Those last five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> the last five minutes of Dark Knight. Rises. Yes. Well, just Man. the whole movie in general, but I saw that yeah. movie. I saw that movie what uh, four or five times in the theater. Wow. Including one IMAX showing, and that was fun. I saw that movie Ooh. multiple times in the theater as well. I have said my piece on The Dark Knight Rises. It is my favorite film of all time. Haters are going to hate. I do not care. You guys can go ahead and say your number ones. <laughs> um, I already know what Presley's number one is. I don't think you under- you know what my number one's going to be, though. Uh, I'm not going to say that I do, but I kind of have a thought. But anyways, my number one, which I, if you have been following along with my little comments... My number one's The Dark Knight. Um, it's Shocker! You can say, you can say it's a cop-out. You can say yes. it's, like, twist. it's everyone's favorite movie. It's everyone's favorite comic book movie. It's everyone's favorite... It's not my movie. favorite movie. <laughs> the general populace. And it, to me, I'm not going to say that I like it for different reasons. I love it because of the symbolism of the entire theme going through that we have just this white knight and this dark knight... And in the end, the city corrupted him. And just that quote, you either die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Um, Harvey Dent. Oh, my gosh. Um, the character was done so well. So probably even better than the comics depict him. Um, better than Tommy Lee Jones. Oh, yeah. Um, and then, don't talk about that. We do not talk <laughs> about that. That didn't happen. And then Two-Face was decent enough 
for the movie. Um, it's not like he was phenomenal. He served his purpose. Um, in, I mean, it was great that this perfect Harvey Dent, who is willing to take the fall for being Batman, you know, that was the whole point of the movie for me was that like, you have Batman who's questionable at times, and then you have Harvey Dent who is just a great guy, which is not what the comics depict him as. Harvey Dent is not a perfect man. <laughs> comics he has issues he is bipolar have you have you read the long halloween <sighs> yes but i don't quite remember that that was a long time ago no because like the whole portrayal of harvey dent there was him being a good person yeah and then suddenly he's two faced <laughs> i don't know my my remembrance of the comic harvey dent spoilers for a graphic novel that came out in like the 1980s <laughs> Yeah. I, so, I mean, it, it, to me, The Dark Knight does have comic ties. It, it, the reason I like The Dark Knight is that it doesn't take one story arc. It takes the whole characterization of the Joker. So, I honestly, my favorite part of the movie is that in the end, the Joker wins. Yes, I love that. And it's the first mm -hmm. time in a movie that we've seen the hero be depicted as amazing and yet the villain wins because all the Joker wanted to do was make the uh, take down the Batman's image he wanted the city to be in chaos he wanted Harvey Dent to be dead um, and then you know just <laughs> everyone makes fun of the Batman's quote in the end but to me I really like it I can watch him riding away on his motorcycle over and over again, and I still love it. <laughs> I agree. It's a bat pod, not a motorcycle. Well, enough. I, I still call it the bat motorcycle, the bat cycle, the bat pod's weird name. They all had interesting names for the vehicles in that. Yeah, the tumbler. <laughs> the Reddit. <laughs> um... I don't know. That, that, I won't go too much into this movie. That's my piece about it. Um, I just really love the movie. Um, it, just him dealing with Rachel, the loss of Rachel. Um, I don't like as much. I like how it carried on into The Dark Knight Rises. I think they made Alfred's uh, withholding of that letter a bit too much than it should have been. Mm. But I don't know. Yeah. 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 We already kind of talked about it with uh, A Rod. But, uh, Alex, what is your number one? My number one is not The Dark Knight. It is not The Dark Knight Rises. Son of a gun. It is Batman Begins. Ah! Oh, I love how we all three did those movies. <laughs> I love how we went backwards. Oh, that's great. <laughs> uh huh. I knew that I knew that A Rods was gonna be Dark Knight Rises going into this, but then um, like the more like we talked about Dark Knight and going on, I was like, oh, Presley's gonna put Dark Knight, and it's like, wow, we're gonna have all three. Yeah, that's, that's... But um, yeah, uh, Liam Neeson is uh, Rachel Ghoul, like was like my introduction to the character, and um, really he's my favorite Batman villain besides the Joker. Um, mostly because of that movie. Then I went and actually read stuff, but whatever. Um, but it was just, like, the origin of Batman. I just, I love the origin story. Like, him, not just, like, where he get like, his parents get shot and whatever, but him actually training and stuff and becoming this symbol. And um, uh, the use of Scarecrow in the movie, too, where, like, the whole... Um, the whole theme of fear threaded throughout the whole thing that I thought I thought was really nice. Um, yeah, I just <laughs> I just really like that movie. <laughs> it's my favorite. I've watched that movie out of that like probably the most out of any of that in that trilogy. Um, it's just my favorite. I own it. I own two copies of it. <laughs> yeah, I I will say that that movie holds a special place in my heart because like Avengers for Alex, it got me it not just like it didn't just like get me reading comics more. It got me reading 
comics in general. But before that, I've really just kind of read very few comics here and there, mostly uh, some Ultimate Spider-Man. That got me into Batman. That got me into comics. Um, loved William Neeson, as you said, as Rachel Ghoul. Um, I didn't know much about other Batman. Like I watched the Batman animated series, of course, and a bunch of yes. other animated shows. Um, but like introducing more than just Killer Croc and the Joker and <laughs> Mr. Freeze. Killer Croc would have been a cool live action villain. He would have been interesting. Um, not for the Nolan films. Not for the Nolan. No, films. not for the Nolan. Films. Um, and then just like Scarecrow. And tying that mm-hmm. back into the flower that Liam Neeson used, and then, you know, Ra's al Ghul not being the old Chinese dude. <laughs> Ken Watanabe? Yes. Like, I, my, one of my, another one of my favorite movie scenes of all time is when um, Scarecrow is talking to Falcone in, like, in that room, yeah. and he's like, would you like to see my mask? <laughs> And like he like like ignites like the fear gas and like puts the mask on, and like just like him like oh man, <laughs> I just love that scene. But um, watching it the normal way is also just as phenomenal. Um, cause it's not think, more like, so. Yeah, because uh, you kind of think like okay, mm-hmm. he's kind of got it together. He's got a suit and everything, but then like uh, here in comes Scarecrow and he just takes him down with one just whiff of the uh, fear gas and so fire. And you're like, he still has to overcome this central thing of fear. And he can't just be any other superhero. He has to be the symbol. And then it starts up everything that I love about the dark Knight. And then, yeah, this is also an all run. It's probably the best origin film I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. I think that about covers everything. All right. Well, thank you to a red from Storyline Films for joining us today. Thank you for having me on. I had a great time. We'd love to have you on again eventually. Yes. Eventually. <laughs> At some point. Eventually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, anytime. Uh, whenever, whenever you're free and it works and whatever. So <laughs> after the next guest. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Well, that'll cover it for today. Thank you all for listening in, and we will see you next week. So follow us on... Um, Twitter, Tumblr, Pinterest. Follow us each individually on Twitter. Go subscribe to Storyline Films. Uh, subscribe to us, please. You can find that on the description. Yeah. Um, like us on Facebook. Whatever. Um, like the video. Yeah, like the video. <laughs> Do this stuff Thank on you. YouTube also. Add it to your favorites. <laughs> Write the YouTube URL and put it on a fence post somewhere. Oh, um, also, put a comment yeah. of your own top ten or top five favorite superhero movies. Definitely, oh, yeah. yeah, do that. Yeah. And, We'd love and to hear. Don't, and don't post negative comments just hating on our choices. Yeah, or post, mine. Post, post negative comments do hating on the two Alex's, not mine. <laughs> <laughs> what? Hey, hey! You put Amazing Spider-Man hey, two on your list. If anybody's getting hate, it's you. <laughs> I got V from Vendetta and Amazing Spider-Man 2. I'm getting the most aid here. All right. We're all out of time. Thank you, a And we will see you all later.